Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem remove covered intervals. We're given an array of intervals and each interval is basically a two points, a left point and a right point. So basically if we had to suppose a number line like this one, then you know, let's take these intervals, for example, one to four would probably look something like this. It would go from, you know, the point one all the way to the point four. So it's just a one dimensional line. And then we have a bunch of one dimensional intervals. So from this list of intervals, we want to remove all the intervals that are covered by another interval and then return the remaining intervals. A interval is defined as being covered by another one if, you know, let's say this is one interval and it's covered by this interval if, and actually let's draw it out. So let's say we had A to B, this is one interval, and we had another interval C to A. So uh, this is technically uh, an interval covering another one. So in this case, this interval is covering this one because the C point is less than or equal to the A point and the D point is greater than or equal to the B point. So basically uh, for this interval to be covering this one, the points have to be equal or uh, you know this interval has to be even bigger than the one that it's covering in you know both points right it has to be equal or uh, you know covering more than it so it's pretty intuitive what it means by covering and since we're given you know a list of intervals so let's take a look at this example what would we return so the brute force would be just to look at every single interval so let's look at this one is it being covered well we'll have to iterate through the remaining intervals in the list is this interval covering this one nope is this interval covering this one nope so therefore this interval is not being covered is this interval being covered well this interval is definitely not covering it because even though this point is less than or equal to this point this point is not greater than or equal to this point so therefore this uh, interval is not covering this one is this interval covering this one well its left point is less than or equal to this one its right point is greater than or equal to this one so yes this interval is being covered by this one so therefore we can remove this interval now is this interval being covered uh, we would look at the only remaining interval. Nope, it's not. So then this is what we would return. These are the two remaining intervals. And we're not actually going to return the intervals, actually. We're going to return the number of remaining intervals. We started with three. Now we only have two. Uh, one edge case you might be thinking about, though, is what if we had duplicate intervals, right? Like we have this interval. And what if we had one that looks exactly like it? And actually, we can't have this because we're told that there are going to be no duplicate intervals. Two intervals won't be covering each other. But the solution that I just talked about uh, would be n squared, because for every interval, we're going to look at every other interval and check if any are covering the first one. But is there a better way to do it? Could we possibly iterate through the intervals in some order where the you know where we wouldn't have to uh, do an n squared thing where we could just iterate through the entire list once well my first idea is to sort them based on the left point where you know the ones with a smaller left point are going to go first and then with a larger left point are going to go after the reason i'm doing this is because in this example this one has the farthest left point right nothing else has an equal left point or smaller left point so therefore what we know about this one is it can't possibly be covered by any of the other intervals right because if it has the smallest left point then surely it won't be covered by the other one so we don't have to look at every single interval to know that this one is not being covered but hold on there might be other intervals that have the same left point right so suppose we had another interval like this one it has the same left point but maybe this one has a smaller right point because remember we can't have duplicates okay so among these two intervals, which one would we want to put first? Well, remember, our idea here is to put the first one such that it, we know that it can't be covered. Well, if there's a, we want to start with the smallest left points, but if there's a tie between left points, we should actually put the one with a larger right point first, because if it has a larger right point, that must mean it's not being covered by any other intervals, because if there's a tie, well, the right value will be smaller. So we know that this one won't be covered. So that's the idea here. We're going to sort 
the intervals based on smallest left point. If there's a tie between left points, we're gonna do the one with a larger right point first. We wanna put the largest uh, intervals first and then put smaller ones because we know the ones after could be covered, but the first ones won't be covered. Okay, so we're gonna start with an input of intervals and we're also gonna have an output of intervals. And what we're gonna do is now iterate through them in the order that we talked about. So this one would go first because it has the smallest left point and there's no ties. And we would simply just take this and then put it in the output. Next, we'd go to the next interval with the smallest left point. And just to make this interesting, actually, I'm gonna add a few more examples. I'm gonna add, let's say, this one and a smaller one as well. So maybe something like that. Okay, so now which one of these would we wanna look at first because they all have the same left point? Well, we wanna look at the one with a larger right point. So this one we're gonna say can be added to the output. But before we add it to the output, we know that if something is gonna cover this one, it's gonna be an interval that came before it because we know that no interval after it is going to be able to cover it because any interval that comes after might have an equal point, but the right point will be less than its right point. So nothing that comes after this one in sorted order will be able to cover it, only the one that came before. So let's look at the one that came before. Well, it had a smaller left point, but it didn't have a greater than or equal to right point. So uh, this one is not being covered by anything. So this one can also be added to the output. Next, we would look at this one. And we wanna know, is this one being covered as well? Well, we would have to look at before this interval, right? The one that came before this interval was this one, right? And of course, this one is covering this one because we would compare the points. Would we also have to look at the first interval to know if this one is covering this one either? We wouldn't have to, and I'll tell you why. Because for this interval, if we were gonna look before it, we wouldn't look before it in the input sorted order. We would look before it in the output sorted order. In the output, because what we know is either the one that came before this which was this one, is being covered by the previous one. And if that's the case, then this interval won't be added to the output, and then we would check if this interval is now covering this one, right? Of course, if this is cover if this is being covered by this one, that would mean that this interval would have looked something like this, and therefore we wouldn't even have to have compared it to this one. We would rather compare it to the one that's even bigger. Okay, but in this case, this interval was actually not being covered by the previous one. So therefore, if this one wasn't being covered by this one, that probably means that this one had a larger right point than this one. So we don't have to check if this is being covered by this one. Checking this one is enough because this one is even bigger anyway than this one. At least we're ta if we're talking about the right point, we already know that this one is gonna have a less than or equal to left point because this one came before this one. So I know this is getting pretty abstract, but it's actually a little bit more simple than you think. So we knew that this one was added to the output, and we know that this one is not gonna be added to the output because it's being covered by this one. So we're gonna go ahead and cross this one out. Next, we would look at this one. Is this one being covered? Well, we'd look at the previous one that came before it, which was this one. And yes, it is being covered by that. So this one would also not be added to the output. And then we'd look at the last interval, which is this one. We would look at the previous interval that came before in sorted order uh, in the output. And that would be this one again. And this one is covering this one. So this is also not added to the output. So we'd have two intervals added to the output. So the result would be two. And the only, uh, even though we scanned through the uh, input in O of n time, remember we did have to sort it based on the smaller left value goes first and greater right value goes first. And sorting is gonna be n log n, so that's the time complexity. Okay, now let's code it up. Let's code it up, and remember, first thing we're gonna do here is sort the input, and the key that we're gonna sort it on is gonna be a function, so it's a lambda function, an inline function. So given an input, let's say x is the interval in this case, I'll call it i, I guess, just to uh, be a little bit more descriptive. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be wanting to sort on is the uh, first value, so i of zero. So that's gonna have the higher precedence. Smaller first value is gonna go first. And we also wanna sort based on the second value if there's a tie, but we don't want smaller to go first, we want larger to go first. To indicate that, I'm gonna make this negative. 
So it'll basically go in reverse order. So by default, Python, you know, sort, will sort this as a tuple. So each interval will be sorted by a tuple and thus it'll be sorted in descending order for the second value pretty much. Okay, and then we want to initialize our result, well, it's not really gonna be the result, but it's basically our other intervals. We know that the first interval won't be covered by any of the other ones. So the first interval can go in the result anyway. We don't have to check anything for that. Uh, but after that, we're gonna iterate through every single interval uh, that comes after the first one. So we can do that like this for every left and right point, starting at index one and continuing. Uh, but we do want to compare this interval to the previous interval in our result array. So let's get that previous left and previous right points from the result array. And we can get the last one that was added using the negative one index in Python. So we want to know, is the current interval being covered by the previous one? We can check that like this is previous uh, left less than or equal to the current left and is previous right greater than or equal to the current right point. If that is the case, that means this current interval is being covered. If it is being covered, that means we're not gonna add it to the result. We only wanna add uncovered intervals to that. So if it's being covered, actually we don't have to do anything. We can just skip this loop, this iteration of the loop and continue to the next interval. But if it's not being covered, then we're simply gonna add it to the result. So we'll add it as a pair add the left and right uh, coordinates. And then after that's done, after we've gone through every interval and we have the ones that are not being covered uh, and the loop is uh, exited, we can just return the length of the result and that'll work. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.